So, all right, so we're on chapter five. Can you believe we're already on chapter five of this book and we only have to go till seven? It has gone by really, really fast, hasn't it? So oh, we've, been yes, learning, it, it, we've been learning a lot about documentation and the uh, front office work and things that a lot of us don't really want to work in front office, but we still have to know those things because we may start there, who knows? So um, we're going to start with documentation in the electronic health record. When you guys read your chapter, did everybody pay close attention to your key terms? It is no secret that key terms are key. You really got to know them. So matter of fact, when you take your final, I would start studying key terms now. Okay. They will reflect in the final. I okay. will say this. I laughed when I read the first line under documentation and the health record. Yes, I have that highlighted and it says, <laughs> yes, it if it is not documented, documented, it did not happen. happen. That is our slogan. If it is not documented, it did not happen. It has got to be documented. Is our, um, our test scheduled yet? Do we have a date on that final test? The final? No, ma'am. I will let you know. How about if I let you know by Friday? All right. So um, I know that the 24th is our last day in this module. So I would assume that the 24th, how about that, Miss Sue? The 24th would be the final. That is not this Friday, but next Friday. Okay. So the health record is a legal document that can be called into court as evidence to show proof of what occurred in the treatment of a patient. So not only is it important for our medical history, it's important legally, right? Uh, also, right? Right. So the third thing, the third point that I wanted to make is the electronic health record is used to record, for instance, patient history, chief complaint, vital signs, allergies, patient education, medication list, orders for tests, and their results. So that's still found on page 81. We haven't moved very far. Documentation helps the provider achieve a high standard of care. Could you possibly remember everything about every patient if you didn't write it down? So because, no. we, because we have accurate and on point documentation, that doctor or the, the healthcare facility can pick up that patient record. And it's almost like when you talk to your high school friend you hadn't talked to in 10 years and you can pick up right where you left off, the doctor, the medical facility can pick that record up and start right where they left off. So making sure that documentation is a fair representation of what's going on is key in making sure that uh, the standard of care is met. <clears throat> Documentation is the most important responsibility of all members of the medical office. Let me read that again. Documentation is the most important responsibility of all members of the medical office. Did you hear that right. word, all? All. <laughs> From the beginning when you hit the door of the receptionist to the back end when they're letting you out to pay to the coder to the biller to the AR specialist to the insurance verification people. Do your job 100% because that documentation is so vital. Okay. How does documentation facilitate healthcare delivery? It makes diagnosis and treatment more efficient. Let me see where I am. That is um, still under documentation, the electronic health record on page 81. <coughs> I'm going to hold my book up. I have it highlighted in pink right here. Yeah, I got it highlighted too. <laughs> so you know where we're at. Uh -huh. Makes diagnosis and treatment more efficient. It promotes patient safety and reduces medical errors serves as a risk management function by providing evidence of communication. Proper documentation in EHR allows related items such as health history, progress notes, patient letters, and patient instructions to be linked. So did, did you guys read your chapter? I did. So uh, if you read your chapter, you're gonna actually be able to pick up some things that sound familiar. If you haven't, then I would like for you to go back 
and read and then kind of come back and listen so it can really just be marinating in your brain. <clears throat> it's not enough though for documentation to just be present and accounted for. It must be thorough and my favorite word, organized. It has to be organized. Because if you have a mess, it's going to create chaos and nothing good comes from chaos, right? We have to be able to keep everything organized and thorough. So we're going to move on talking about voice recognition. Okay, so what is speech recognition software? It's a technology that converts speech into text as the provider speaks into the microphone. I mean, that's kind of dur, right? But just to make sure that we know what that is and allows the user to work hands-free eliminates the problem of misplaced or misfiled patient notes it decreases the rate of transcription mistakes but it's not perfect itself okay i want you to understand it's not perfect itself um, it lowers the cost of transcription reduces the amount of time necessary to complete documentation and increases the overall quality of patient care. Okay, according to National City Court, transcription costs about 11 cents per, mi uh, per line, not per mile, <laughs> per line, and average patient encounter would be about 35 lines. So it's very inexpensive. But I, um, I know that some of you that have been with me for a while, and maybe I've told this story to you guys too, but. Um, it was really, really funny. Dr. McCabe is an older doctor, and when he would speak into the thing, he would do this, and you would never know. You might have a breast on your right toe before he was done. So, of course, it isn't perfect, and you still have to read and get clarification sometimes, but all in all, it's actually pretty darn good, and it's even better today than it was 10 years ago. So, um, Speech recognition capability is available as an add-on to EHR systems. Now, do I know if it's everyone? No, I don't really know that, but that's what our book is telling us, that it's an add-on part for your EHR. Okay, so documenting remote patient provider encounters. That is going to be on page 82. All interactions with patients include telephone interactions should be documented in the electronic health record. Um, physicians must document all prescription refills called in or emailed to pharmacies in response to patient phone requests. And telephone documentation can be uh, medication refills, sick calls, or patient treatment questions. Okay, so we're going to talk about what are e-visits. Do you guys know what an e-visit visit is? Yeah. What's an e-visit, Miss Lisa? It's an interaction over the internet uh, in a uh, secure environment. <laughs> right. It can be over the internet. It can be through your telephone now. Um, there's right. lots of ways. Um, I think when I actually wrote it's the book, so maybe awful. this was a new thing, but e-visits are no longer a new thing. It is really pretty uh, normal for you to have like telemedicine is one of the things that uh, I used to have where you could just call up a, a doctor and tell them what your symptoms were if they were just regular symptoms like you thought you had a sinus infection or you had an earache or you know things like that they can prescribe over the phone and keep you out of the doctor and what they do is they get your uh, pharmacy information and they call mm -hmm. the pharmacy and you just go pick up your medicine no muss no fuss i like that but okay. has anybody my had next in question huh? is that i so said that was going to be my question is it also called telemed yeah, it can be called telemed. Okay, I'm going to move fast, guys, because <laughs> I'm running out of time. Okay, patient encounter. There are eight types of patient encounters. Annual examination, comprehensive visit, follow-up established visit, new patient visit, urgent visit, wellness examination, six-month visit, and phone encounters. So when we start going this far, you guys, your brown boxes, start on page 84. Um, mm -hmm. The allergies portion, if you look above that, um, each, well, each thing that you do is going to be about that section. For example, allergies. And then exercise 5.2 is document patient allergies. So, uh, you know, 
and you have 5.2 and 5.3, you're going to do that. Patient history is uh, 5.4. So as you go through, you're actually going to be doing each one of these things. So I am not going to spend a lot of time there. Um, I do want to make a point about allergy listing. Why do you think it's important to have an accurate allergy list? Every time the patient walks through the door, why do we need an accurate allergy list? So we don't kill the patient. Well, not only that, but sometimes patients can develop new allergies mm -hmm. to where or find out about an allergy they didn't have prior. Right. Well, how terrible is it to have a terrible um, allergy to ibuterol or uh, say penicillin and then you get in the middle of something and you have a horrible reaction to penicillin? You know, yeah, they need to know this. So every single time, and do you guys may not be asking the patient their allergy list, but you may be documenting yeah. what you find out. So it's very, very important that you understand that allergy uh, mistakes can be lethal and deadly. Okay. So, and then we had documenting the patient history. Okay, I wanna make a point that PFSH is past family and social history. And ROS is review of systems. Those of you who have been coding with me for a long time, you should recognize that word and you should know where to go to find it in your CPT. Okay. Chief complaint is very, very important. Do you guys remember us speaking about that at length during coding? So your yeah. chief complaint is the reason for the visit, right? CC. CC, that's right, chief complaint. We wanna talk about acute, appear suddenly and leave suddenly. Remember we talk about acute boy comes and goes fast and the chronic persists over a long period of time. So the chief complaint is what the reason for the, why are you here? That's your chief complaint. Okay, and then we'll talk about an HPI, which is history, present illness. Um, gonna be your symptoms, the duration of your symptoms, timing, modifying factors, and associated signs and symptoms. So uh, I know that some of you didn't get a chance to go through that with us for coding, but you learn this stuff in depth when you're coding. Okay, who knows about pain scale? You've been to the doctor or the hospital and you have that one where they're smiling and the last one is so that's a pain scale. <laughs> so you're always asked, what is your pain between one and two or point to which one is your pain scale? Okay, so now we're going to move to page 89 and we're talking about medication. Most patients take multiple medications, including the elderly and chronically ill. Patients may be on medications from more than one provider, and it's critical, it's vital to keep the medication record current, record, record reasons for discontinuing medications also. And that may be part of your allergy listing too, because maybe they got put on a certain uh, blood pressure medicine or whatever kind of medication it is, and they happen to be allergic to it, or they don't react well to it. Um, and that's gonna move to their allergy listing too. Um, again, you're going to be able to be able to document at, uh, medications on exercise 5.6. Okay, and that kind of bleeds right into immunizations and vaccinations. Um, one of the things about uh, going to a pediatrician, and it's the same pediatrician all the time, they'll be able to go back into your, uh, your child's record and tell you when they had their shots, when they're going to need their shots, things like that, and that's just a matter of a drop-down menu. So you're going to be able to do a vaccination authorization form on 5.7. I don't know how many of these are actually due. It's 5.1 through 5.7 is due today. So um, I'm just kind of going through. Most of this stuff is just get in and getting, you know, getting it done. You're going to be able to put all the words you've read into an actual use. And I love that part of this curriculum. You read about it, then you go do it. Hi, Sailor. I'm sorry, I can't not speak to her. She's smiling at me. Okay, using the EHR for patient education. So who knew that you could use your EHR for patient education? I well, did. if you've been playing on it, you, you, should, you know that there's a portion on there that's all about patient education, right? Yep. 
You need to encourage the patient to ask questions as needed. Have the patient and caregiver demonstrate skills before leaving the office to ensure that proper technique is used. Whenever Justin was diagnosed with diabetes, we actually had to prove before they would let us go home that I could effectively give him his medication because that's death real fast. So and encourage patients to contact the office at any time with any additional questions. So if a patient is driving you crazy and wanting to know information and not understanding, please be patient with them, okay? I'm in the middle of class, please wait. Sorry. Okay, I'm running out of time, so I've gotta do this fast. A digital signature. When a note is signed electronically, the provider is representing that everything within the note is correct. A notation of when it was signed and by whom is shown below the signature line on the saved notes. So have any of you ever done a um, electronic signature? Yeah, we sign those at the hospital all the time. Okay, this yep, is the last yeah. yeah, this is the last thing. This is your assignment for part of your lesson today. I want you to give me the definition of a soap note, page 97. And I want you to learn what each thing means because it is vitally important. What on 97? Yes, ma'am. It says S subjective, O objective, A assessment, P plan, oh, okay. P evaluation. I'm actually, when I get off of here, I'm gonna go straight into Edmodo. I had a really, really great video for you guys to watch with the slideshow. And I'm going to go ahead and put that video up so you can watch it because it is fantastic. Yeah, so I'm back here. You, go ahead. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Miss Marsha. Oh no, I was done. Go ahead. No, no, I, I just had somebody show up. That's all. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. oh that's okay. Okay. Well, I'm get, it's timing me out. Um, I have like six minutes or all right. yeah, six minutes. Does anybody have any questions or anything for me? I'm sorry that this was so rushed. Uh, no, the only question I have is on our Sims chart on um, how you get double information off of there. I'll have to look into it okay <laughs> i think there's a way that you can delete stuff so i'll have to look into it for you anybody yeah, else i got double uh information on here because uh i'm not uh doing this right apparently but i'm i'm working on my ehr right now okay all right anybody else and i and also too on the uh dental section there it won't let you get out and save because it, it's asking for a field answer there, which is, hold on. Well, now it won't let me get to it. Okay, Joe, when you have a time, can you get with Miss Lisa and kind of walk through on how to delete stuff and get with her on that question? Because I, you can see her side of it, I can't. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna try and go in there because i don't remember how to delete them but i'll go try and go in there and help her do that we were actually on the phone before we got on zoom we were talking okay. about it. all right that sounds good any other ladies have anything for me all right have a wonderful day don't hesitate to call me if you need me what was the question uh, i'm sorry yes ma'am rebecca you said something about page 97 can you go over what we're supposed to do on page 97 I would like for you to give me a detailed um, definition of what soap notes are. Okay. Gotcha. And I'm going to actually put a video up as soon as we get off here onto Edmodo so you can actually watch something further because I had that planned in our for our slideshow, but Google is so I'll go I'll go right away and do that as soon as we hang up. All okay. right. Thank you, Miss Marsha. Thank you, ladies. Have a great day. All right.